It's uh, Benjamin Ray with Tread Global here, and I'm here with uh, Carrie, the CEO of Hippo Packaging. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for asking. It looks like you're in sunny Southern California, San Diego. What's the weather like there today? Oh my God, it's beautiful. 72 and sunny here today. Um, this is kind of the best time of year for weather in, in you know, in, in Southern California because it's nice and cool and crisp and, and just beautiful, perfect weather. Here in, here in Colorado, it's super cold out today, but it's really beautiful as well. You know, we get 330 days of sunshine, so there can be tons of snow on the ground, but it's, it's beautiful here as well. That's so, awesome. Colorado is yeah. beautiful. That's a cool thing about this is we can be having a meeting or in the same place, even though we're completely different parts of the country. Yes, absolutely. So I was um, I was reading you, you've got a lot of great info and, you know, press lately online. And I was reading one of uh, your articles last week and it was about how sustainability now because of coronavirus has kind of gone out the window with the conversations from your customers. And I experienced the same thing. You know, everything that we've been working toward for four or five years in terms of sustainability really got off of the agenda for a lot of people. So one reason why I kind of started this show was to really get it back in the conversation. And your perspective is that it's still really far out there. And I'd love to hear kind of how you came out with that and, and what you've seen change over the past year. Well, you know, thanks for that, uh, Benjamin. I, you know, we are Hippo Premium Packaging is a cannabis focused packaging company. So we, we basically do cannabis packaging, CBD and hemp packaging. So that's our, our market niche. And our industry has been very focused on sustainability. Anyone that we are talking to, it's, it's a top, top of mind, top concern for, for our industry. Um, because our industry is of the land, of the plant, and want to take care of, of our, our planet. Um, and so, but, but with COVID and, and everything that's happened, people have had, had to kind of back burner some of those initiatives that they've had because they have to focus on keeping the lights on or reducing costs or what, whatever that is, you know? So uh, we found that 44% of Americans wipe off their packaging of their groceries when they get up home. And, so, and that's, they still do that even that's, after that's what, 10 months. That's what we we learned. Wow. And you know, if if you have a, a, a water based, if you don't have any kind of a coating on your on your packaging, or that you know, you could very well just kind of ruin the look of it. And and packaging has a a, a pretty uh, you know, it, it's got a lot of hard work to do, uh, especially cannabis packaging. It's got to be child resistant. It's got to be tamper evident. It's got to express the brand. It's got to protect the product. It's got to have all this regulatory um, compliance as well. And and that's a lot for a little package to do. So um, it, 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 there's there's been a lot of stress on it. And then what we also found is in, in our research is that a lot of the cities don't have the resources to do the recycling like they used to. So some of that has gone by the wayside. So it's, you know, that it's a struggle because people are having to focus on, on the bottom line. Hmm. Well, you know, that's one thing that we realized over these, you know, the past couple of months when I've been doing these kind of polls on LinkedIn is that, you know, everyone is interested in sustainability. And one of the questions I asked was, how much more would you pay for a sustainable package over a non-sustainable 10%, 20%, zero. And most people said zero, you know? So it's, it's there, there is a small minority of people who will pay a lot more, but my perspective is for it to be truly, I guess, disruptive, it needs to be way less so that we don't have to spend time educating Americans or whomever on the value of sustainability. It's just cheaper, you know? So then it, then it doesn't matter. So there's a lot of work to, to uh, you know, get to that place where where the materials are less expensive, and that's something I know that you've talked to me about is that all of your customers are interested in you know sustainable packaging until you um, start looking at the price. In fact, this question just came up here from Lily, exactly what you and I were talking about. So can you address that? Yeah, Lily, I, I see your comment there, and you're absolutely right. And what what is so sad because 
there are beautiful stocks out there that are that have you know 100% post consumer waste they uh, FSC SFI all of these great certifications for paper and you know it's then then we 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 give a price you know we we will give a price and we we've, we've quoted it with regular SBS paper which is your standard packaging paper versus one of these beautiful hemp infused papers or whatever one of these uh, other beautiful papers and the price can double just for your box um at a at 10,000 range you know we had a lot of bells and whistles but uh, on, on this package, it was 60 cents and 10,000 is a small run for packaging, but 60 cents a box. And then once we we put it on the special fancy, you know, eco friendly paper, it it became double. Now, there are things that you can do um, and, that are within budget and there are SF, uh, you know, uh, you know SF, uh, FSC papers um that are uh that are board stocks and they're not that much more expensive just a few pennies more hmm. so sometimes you know the 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 clients are, are are willing to pay a couple of pennies more but double is a lot is a lot to ask yeah yeah i think this is this really goes goes into here you know lily's also saying need to scale get the price down but can't scale until the price goes down as you know you know yeah. here at here at thread thanks lily here at uh, Tread, you know, our, our MOQ is around, you know, 100,000, you know, to be price competitive. And a lot of startups and a lot of people who are more, you know, socially minded or environmentally minded, they may not have the budget and they do smaller runs and they want to get their product out there. And it's very difficult for them to be able to do that with without, uh, you know, doing large runs. And and that is so true. And and we find that we're having to educate our clients on run sizes and people say, I'm going to, I've got a whole bunch. I'm going to do a thousand this year. And we're like, Oh, well, you know, we're like, Oh, that's, you know, because it's it, it, with packaging and, and, and you know, this Ben, you you've been doing this a long, long time, but the, the higher your, your runs are uh, the, the lower that, that unit cost is. Mm -hmm. And then you really are able to realize the ROI you need on your, on your program but they've got to start somewhere and they've got to start get, getting a foothold. So, you know, coming up with options that, that, that work uh, on smaller runs is, is actually very important. There's a question here from, from Matt, hundred thousand units adds up to becomes a lot of warehousing. And that is a challenge. You know, if you, you do have the budget to get the price down and you make them, what do you do with them? You know, if they're, if they're big packaging. You know, and that that's that is a really good point because a lot of people don't have the warehouse space to to take those. So uh, there are times that we will warehouse in L.A. or New York um, certain products uh, like our, our dual lock product, for example. We have a stocking program that we can warehouse for people. But, you know, it, it is it is difficult for people to find the room, not only the budgets, but the room to store them. I want to talk a little bit about uh, child resistance and uh, how that adds a whole layer of complexity. You know, we've talked to you about, you know, some of our, um, you know, glass products and some of these ones for concentrates, and these are child resistive. And, you know, they, they pinch and they pull, and that adds a whole nother level in terms of not just complexity for design, um, manufacturing, but also in terms of the materials, in terms of segregating and multiple materials that you need. And that is way more complicated than just having a standard package. Are you seeing that on your end? Oh yes. Um, you know, we like like I said, all of all of our clients come in and, and just want sustainable options. And so we we've, we've we've combed the world, and we still do. So if if anybody out there who's listening has something that you want to share, please do. Um, but we, we really look uh, far and wide to find the best options that are sustainable for our clients. And one of our, uh, I was mentioning the dual lock product, mm -hmm. which is a uh, folding carton product. Let me see, I'll grab one real quick. I'm just going to grab this. These guys are from Colorado. Um, and, and it has the two little tabs on the sides mm -hmm. that you, you press in and, and this is uh, Adolphus Bush, but this is a pre-roll pack. And we have had to line the inside of this pack with tear resistant lamination yeah. just to get it through the child 
um, resistant testing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it went through 17 iterations of, we had to keep making adjustments because the kids were, were picking off the glue and getting inside or, yeah. you know, they were doing all these things. So, or, or, or there's, they're eating through it or whatever they'll, they'll, they'll do whatever they, they have to, to try to get into these packages during the testing process. So we ended up having to add a tear resistant lamination to this yep. to, to get it to, to, to get it to pass. Now that, that is a, a you know, a, a struggle for people who are trying to recycle because mm -hmm. some counties and states and countries are, will take, paper laminated with a plastic product, but most people like that separated out. And mm -hmm. this is, this, this particular package has a lot of good, you know, environmental um, properties. It's not glued together so you can take the plastic bit out, but as long as you're in a, in a place that can take a laminated sheet, like a milk, milk carton right. or something like that. We had to do the same thing with one of our, our customers. We worked with them. They have an amazing box. Uh, great printing on it you know we we're talking about using water-based glues water-based ink so that it could truly be biodegradable but then we did have to put that lamination on there and we had to put it on the inside so that the kids couldn't rip it in the corner so it's a huge challenge just this extra layer of complexity and the part that you're talking about you know do you think that people would take a box and tear off the lamination and then separate them you know i don't even know where you would put those into two different, you know, containers, most municipalities, th there's no way that they can segregate things like that, it, let alone consumers, you know, we have one bin that we put them in. So it makes a very complicated um, in the cannabis industry, industry to do child resistive and sustainable on a massive scale or yeah. small scale for that, for that matter. I've got a, another question here from, from Lily about that most packages are designed for the mass market and they can do those big ones, but the stuff moves fast, but unlike cannabis, and you know, we were kind of talking about that earlier, that uh, a lot of these companies need to do short runs when they get a 2.0 product out, or especially now with COVID, if they're if they don't have as many workers in their MIP to get the product out, then <laughs> they just can't do big quantities, and there's nowhere to store it if you're a startup too. So well, and when you're a startup, you've got to you've got to make sure you have the demand, and 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 you know, and to produce a hundred thousand units, that's a lot of units to get mm -hmm. out and get sold. And usually, you start you got to start crawl, walk, run, you know, because uh, you've got to create the demand for your product and create the name and and get that traction through a distributor. Uh, relationships or, or direct sales or however, you know, whatever your marketing and, and sales strategies are, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it is, it, it's, it's a, it's a struggle. Small run packaging is a struggle for mainstream as well as of course the cannabis industry, but the cannabis industry is primarily small businesses. And because we're a, a, a brand new, brand new evolving um, market. Yeah. And it, brand new industry. So are there are a lot of small startups there in San Diego or, or at least Southern California. What do you see in terms of the growth? You know, we, I, I would say California companies are probably a little bigger than, than some, but you know, because of the uh, illicit market in California and because the, it was taxed so high and it was very, that the barrier to entry was pretty high to get into the California cannabis market. Um, and so the illicit market, probably 90% of all cannabis in California is bought off the illicit market. Mm -hmm. um, and, but that is shifting, uh, especially after the vape crisis last year, because um, the illicit market does not test their product. Um, uh, and, and, yeah, or they don't really go unregulated. To testing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for safety reasons, people, at least vape pens, they started buying from dispensaries and, and, and things like that. But, um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a small business. You know, when I came from mainstream where I worked with fortune 500 companies and then I came into this, this industry and I was, I was just really surprised at how the needs shift, you know, for the same types of pro, pro, uh, programs. But when you're in a small business, it's, it's just a whole nother set of, of, of challenges. 
Well, not not only if you're, I mean, if you're small, let's say you're large and you're a multi-state operator, then you're going to have to deal with, you know, different state regulations and different regulations, you know, for child resistive and then the recycling. Yeah. So it's all, it's either you're either small and you've got your challenges within this industry or you're big and you have the challenges within this industry. And, and, and that, that's so true. And I, I have people come to me that are big MSOs and they're like, we just want to run one type and run a hundred, two hundred thousand, and then just sticker, you know, the the regulations by state. And I'm like, oh, I don't I hate to break it to you, but that's not going to work. That universal symbol changes state to state. It's not all that universal. All the regulations change. Um, you're just going to sticker, sticker, sticker a package. And and when you're running, and you're in a production run, you're you're you can run multiple up, and you can find efficiencies and actually, uh, you know, make the make the product look great on shelf but you know you've just got to have the right packaging production partners right yeah figure it out so let's talk about materials you know in terms of hemp based in terms of sustainable things that are coming out that that you've seen that you know you've talked about that there are some great ideas but they're not quite there yet in terms of kind of the refinement in terms of what people are thinking that products should look like that are elegant or nice you know they're, they're they're clunky. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we get a lot of people that have this hemp products and they're super excited and we're excited. We can't wait to see them and we get them and we're like, oh, you know, it's like brown and huge and clunky and, and, and you're just like, uh, no, I mean, who, you, you know, as this industry, people are working really hard to develop, you know, good solutions for it, but they, they haven't really gotten to the refined solutions. Now, mm -hmm. however, I've seen a real shift in paper. Um, mm -hmm. a, a couple of years ago, we, I, I had all these people with hemp papers and they'd come and show them to me and they would be a little bumpy and not very sturdy or stable and, and have a bunch of you know nose hairs or whatever you call it, but a bunch <laughs> of stuff in, in them. And, and you'd look at them and you go, oh, I don't know. It just, it, it's not appealing. But Nina, I think it, it could have been two years ago now, but uh, I saw it came on my radar maybe early last year. It came out with a hemp infused paper, and uh, and and that had some great, you know. Of course, it's got a great story. It's a it's a premium paper. It's beautiful, beautiful finish and, and just gorgeous. Um, three different colors they came out with, and then Mohawk came out with a hemp line. Hmm. And uh, that that was even had 30% hemp, where Nina's was maybe 10% hemp. And then um, Magnavnok just came out with a beautiful hemp line. So these are hemp papers for packaging, but again, they're they're going to be in that high price point. So I mean, if your brand is a luxury brand and you can get top dollar and and you can price yourself at the top of the market. Then, then you could sustain, you know, that type of a program with with a, a, a super high end luxury paper. Lily's commenting here again. Thanks, Lily, about that. Hemp packaging needs industrial design, and I think it's really important. And that's a good point: is that it isn't just like you can have brown cardboard and say, "Oh, this is awesome." Especially if it's huge, it might be sustainable, but it may not be elegant. And yeah. It's not what people are used to, you know, and, and there's a there's, there's a thought that it's kind of, you know, eco or kind of hippie crunchy, you know, from from back in the day. And but it's it's not that it needs to be all those things like it needs to be elegant. It needs to be sustainable. It needs to be, you know, even available to take water based paint, except different glues. So it's way more complex than just being the color or something like that. Exactly. And and you make a good point, you know, using FSC papers, that's not that hard to do. You can even do those on a folding board, doesn't cost that much. Uh, and you can make make them make them more elegant using embossing and foils. Foils are recyclable. Uh, once mm. you, you, you foil a product, there's a, uh, a misconception out there that once you, you add foil to it can't be recycled. And, and that's not true. So you can add decorative um, touches to SBS paper as well uh, to try to help the budget. Hmm. It's interesting. Okay. Well, that's good. So what do you see coming up in 2021 in terms of this whole thing, sustainability, sustainable packaging, how it will evolve over the next year 
And I, I would say not just in a normal year, but in this year of where we are with kind of coronavirus and the, the breaks a little bit on sustainability. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I in a, in a year, I, I probably don't see a huge shift in just one year. But what I like, I like TerraCycle. You know, the the um, the containers that are reusable containers. That model, and I can see cannabis really adopting a a, a model like that for more permanent uh, containers that are refillable. Mm -hmm. um, and and I don't know if you're familiar with uh, TerraCycle and Loop and and that whole program. But basically, it's 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 a move movement towards um, uh, you know reusable packaging um, mm -hmm. and and getting rid of single use packaging. So mm -hmm. basically, like uh, the return of the milkman, say you know. So you have your milk jugs and and you you put them outside and they refill them and they bring them back to you. So um, there's there's a lot of companies who are are getting on board with a, a program like that, and I think it's it would be a natural for the cannabis industry. You know, you have a beautiful flower yeah. jar and you just refill it, a biodegradable bag. You know, biodegradable materials are, there's a lot of biodegradable films out there. They haven't really developed a biodegradable CR zipper yet. Mm. So, you know, you can get uh, some of these, but it's not quite there. So hopefully a movement into kind of completing the cycle or the circle of that development uh, hopefully in the next year, but more long term, I, I'd like to see us do. We were talking about a, a biodegradable zipper just this morning uh, at the office in a meeting, which is interesting. The um, uh, yeah, you know, it, it seems like there there's a lot of room for innovation. There's a lot of room for things. That, I mean, there's opportunity, a lot of opportunity in this area. You know, over the next over the next however long, you know. It isn't just this next year. It's it's going to be a while. I've got uh, a question here, and and I like this. It's uh, from Tim, and it is a shameless plug, which I like. So th <laughs> thank you, Tim. <laughs> Completely fine. Every <laughs> Denison has a full portfolio of sustainable materials. Thank you for that, Tim. Uh, he's also a green on the loop model, which I think is really important too. You know, the one thing about that 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 I've seen over the years is here in Colorado, the um, the cannabis industry followed the craft beer industry. And so now what you can do, you know, you have, you can take a, a let's say you can buy a growler at a, at a, a, like a brew pub, take it home and you can take it back and you can exchange it like that. So what would have, to, so you have to, you can have, you know, uh, because the laws, you can brew it there and you can sell it, but it has to be in limited quantities. So I see that happening because cannabis industry did follow the craft beer industry here about five years behind. Uh, lag behind. So I can see that happening now where the licensing would have to change so that you would have to be able to have your, your MIP, your manufacturing facility tied into your retail and, and have one license for that so that consumers could bring a package back in, they could fill it there, put the stamps on it and then send it out. So I can see that happening over time, you know, maybe in the next three or four years based on that, um, that model of you know, it's, it, it is sustainable because you're refilling, but it's also an advancement in the licensing and how to make things less um, problematic, I think, for consumers and to collect taxes and all that stuff that we've done a great job here in Colorado on. And I see that evolving as well. Yes, I, I mean, I would love to see it. And I think it, it, it it's a natural, you know, um, Canada has a very, very strict recycling laws in, uh, in place for cannabis. And um, a lot of the companies there are, are, are kind of adopting, you know, these these very stringent um, protocols for, for recycling their products. And a lot of companies are paying up to 30 cents a package to have it recycled. So that I mean, for, for some of these companies that are larger, and they can they can afford that, that's that's awesome that they're doing that for the environment and for for the industry, but it's 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 a big ask, you know, um, for a company to to take that on after after the product has already been, hit the shelf and and to take that expense on. You know, I think that we'll see a lot more of that in terms of corporate social responsibility, and it's going to be built into really the uh, you know five, ten year, twenty year plan that it's important to do that. So, you know, it may cost a little bit more now. But in the long run, 
Uh, it helps with the bottom line, helps with PR, and it's just a, a, a good thing to do. So we'll probably see more of that coming around here. Yeah, well. I, I agree. Good. Well, how can uh, someone get a hold of you? What's your website? What's the best way to contact you? Yeah, um, you can reach out, to, uh, check us out at uh, www.hippopackaging.com. You can reach out to info at hippopackaging.com and I'll see that that email. Um, you can call us at 619-269-0939, um, but just reach out any any way that, that, that you like. Well, great. Well, thank you for your time. It was really good to uh, talk to you and uh, have a have a good end of the year and start to the next. Thanks, Benjamin. I enjoyed it very much and good luck to you as well. All right. We'll see you later. All right. Okay.